Hello! Welcome to Baking from Books. I am Callan, a reference librarian who loves trying to make things. In this edition of Baking from Books, we are focusing on star-crossed love, books where you root for the romance even though all the odds are against it and it feels pretty doomed from the start. This time around, I'm trying to make red velvet lava cakes for two. Um, it is from the blog Baking Mischief. Do go check them out. It's a great recipe, and I can see they were trying to be elegant about it, and it is still easy to make. Um, Red Velvet Lava Cakes is inspired by the book The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. It came out last year. You probably have heard of it, but if you haven't, it's inspired by originally the film Crimson Peak, a Guillermo del Toro film, and which also in turn was inspired by Jane Eyre and Rebecca and all the gothic romances where a new bride is brought to her husband's haunted house and their love faces off against ghosts uh, from his past, ghosts real and imagined, basically. I love it because it puts its own twist on a classic story while honoring the legacy of all the others that came before it. So it starts out reading like a typical British historical novel, but all these surreal elements keep creeping in until you're not really sure what's going on or where this book is set or what to expect. Uh, why this recipe? In the book, Jane Lawrence um, marries Augustine Lawrence, an eminent surgeon, and she helps him in his practice, which means she sees a lot of blood, like a concerning amount of blood. And yet at the same time, she starts to fall in love with him and he starts to fall in love with her. And so the red and red velvet lava cake um, really echoes the intimacy and romance that grows up between them, uh, but also the blood and gore that haunts their whole relationship. So once again, uh, I'd like to credit the blog Baking Mischief for this recipe, and let's make it. So if you're looking for a spooky date night dessert, um, you can make this recipe. So to start out, you take one third of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate, chopped, or chocolate chips. Chocolate chips are a little easier because you don't have to chop it, but either works fine. And you put that in a microwave-safe bowl with two tablespoons of vegetable or canola oil. And you microwave it until the chocolate melts, so about 30 seconds. When that comes out, you stir it around until it's smooth. I tend to say that's smooth enough, so then you set that aside to cool off a little bit before you mix it with the rest of it. So then you take another bowl, and you put in one egg, Whisk that up, um, basically breaking it up. And once your egg is whisked up, you take your cool chocolate mixture. Maybe I should have let mine cool longer, but it's close enough. And you slowly stir that in. And you want to get those two combined. Now comes uh, the bloody part. You take your food coloring, and it says red gel food coloring. I don't know if it would make a difference if you use typical food coloring. And you put a half a teaspoon of red food coloring into this. And if you've ever found a good way to get food coloring to come out of a measuring spoon quickly, let me know. So you whisk that up until it's an ominous dark red color. And then, take all-purpose flour, and this is such a small recipe, you only need two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Like so, and a pinch of salt, and you stir that together. If our excellent caretaker is watching this, I promise I will clean this up before I leave this room. Is your basic cake batter, and that's all it takes to get the cake batter all mixed up. 
And just between us, I think you could just eat this with a spoon and that would be just as satisfying as the eventual cake, but it's up to you. Now, to bake this recipe, you'll want your oven preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which is extremely hot. It made my kitchen just boiling. And you will need a muffin tin. The standard size muffin tin works the best for me. I tried it in a jumbo and it just doesn't make enough batter for that. Um, and you want to grease two cups only of your muffin tin. You could use cooking spray, but guess what I forgot? This is the part I don't get because it's never really worked out well for me, but you take a little bit of granulated sugar and you sprinkle it in the prepared cups. And it says, like you're making a souffle, as if I've ever made a souffle in my life. And then you're ready to make filling that goes inside the lava case. I think in ordinary recipes for lava case, it's often just uncooked batter in the middle that makes the lava part. But in this case, they make a special cream cheese center to go with the red velvet flavor. To make the cream cheese center, you need one ounce of cream cheese, room temperature. That's what I've got in this bowl here. And then you need more granulated sugar. But again, because it's such a small recipe, you only need two teaspoons. You need another quarter teaspoon of red food coloring again. I apologize if you make this recipe because of me, because it does make your dishes look like a crime scene. And then you also need half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Vanilla extract is just a, that's not a teaspoon. Okay. Playing fast and loose with my measurements today, but that's pretty typical. And then you whisk that up. I have not been using a whisk for these because it tends to get stuck in the whisk. I'm gonna try it with a spoon, but I might have to go to a whisk and just submit to the dishes. My tip for you on the filling is to do wait until the cream cheese is at room temperature or get it as room temperature as possible because the more liquidy your center can be, the easier it is to do the next part. And hopefully this next part will be entertaining for you because it's not for me. So you get your cream cheese filling, all red and bloody looking and all basically combined, I guess. And then it's time to actually get them ready to go in the oven. So, take your muffin tin and your cake batter, and you just divide the batter evenly between the two cups using your best eyeballing method. So, get it into your two muffin cups like that, roughly. And then, this is the first time I've ever used a piping bag. It has not super gone well, but it's easier than, in the recipe it says you can put it in a Ziploc bag and snip off the corner, but that for me didn't work so well. It ends up looking kind of gross. So then you take your filling and you put it in a piping bag, which if you ask me is a two person job, so we'll see how I do. That's not all of it, but it's close enough. Hopefully with practice I'll get better at piping bags, but um, now comes the part where I try and get it down to the bottom where the tip is gonna go. How do you attach the tip? I don't know. Gross. So, got it almost down to the end, and then put the tip on. And what you wanna do poke the tip into it. So you've got your batter here. You're gonna take the tip and just poke it into it and then squeeze some of the filling out into it. Oops. And it spills everywhere and looks gory. Which just fits with the book, doesn't it? There wasn't a, a photo on the blog of what this is supposed to look like, so I hope this is close. So you can see that most of the filling is underneath, but some of it has splurted out on the top. And then you put that in your oven, which again is 425 degrees Fahrenheit, for seven to nine minutes. Seven has been plenty for me so far. You just want the edges to look set. Um, and I tend to go on the low end because otherwise I burn things. And then you 
okay, take it out and you let it cool in the pan for two to three minutes. It will be very hot and you want it to be pretty set before you get it out. And then you wash your hands because the filling gets everywhere. When you get it out of the oven, what you'll see is this. Again, the gross stuff on the top where the filling has sort of splurted out on the bottom. But when it's all set, once it's cooled, you can flip it over and it actually looks like a proper little lava cake, which is very satisfying, really. And then you just take some powdered sugar and you give it a dusting. Roughly like that. And again, I promise I will clean up this room if any of my coworkers are watching. And you end up with these two little lava cakes that are perfect for you and one other person or you'll have a leftover one for the next day um, for a romantic and vaguely bloody looking dessert. And that's it. It's really amazing that that's all it takes. It's a quick recipe and where can you go wrong with red velvet lava cake, right? With cream cheese flavor alongside the red velvet, absolutely can't be beat. And it perfectly evokes this spooky, gory, romantic book. If you haven't read it, I really recommend you check it out because it was just so well done and absolutely addictive and well paced. So, as always, comment below with any tips you have for me, things I could have done better, um, any tweaks you'd make to this recipe, and always share your results. We definitely want to hear from you if you make it yourself and see how it went and what you think of the recipe. So tune in next time for another installment of Baking from Books Star Cross Love Edition featuring mermaids next time around and jello. So in the meantime, happy reading, happy baking.